Kofi, and thank you, Paul, for this wonderful opportunity. As you can see, I'm in the back of a car coming from one meeting uh, to another, but uh, what an opportunity it is to be celebrating uh, Paul Zaleza's book, which I had the pleasure of reading and enjoying because uh, I have known Paul for a long time. And I know when he writes, I need to sit down and read and read carefully. I remember that uh, I met Paul uh, in his early years uh, in the US uh, in 1994 at a summer institute organized by the African Studies program at the University of Illinois where I was a student in grad school. And it is there where I realized what a brilliant scholar he was and what, how passionate he was about Africa. And this is very much captured in the work that he has done in this book. And then later, I had the chance of reading the book that uh, Godwin talked about, uh, the Manufacturing African, African Studies and Crisis. And I was challenged by that book because I remember one of the things that uh, was very clear to me was when, when Paul talked about these fly by night uh, academics and academic tourists, and uh, even went in and talked about anthropologists and uh, my field is anthropology. So I felt a little indicted by Paul and I thought, I need to read more about this book. I, I, I read it and I must say, it really inspired the kind of writing I have done myself uh, when it comes to articulating Africa and uh, African studies and how Africa is um, projected, thought about, written about. But today we celebrate yet another book, 24 years later, where Paul has put together some really fascinating short essays written by a historian who is commenting on contemporary issues. It is not always easy uh, to combine the two without turning into sort of a contemporary studies kind of writing. But Paul has this ability to pick a topic that is current and yet go deeper into history and show the roots and how it formed. And that's why uh, he is able, for instance, to show that some of the subtle things that are ignored come back to become the critical catalysts of things that happen in uh, the processes that take place. Let me take, uh, when he wrote about Brexit, uh, Brexit is something that happened many, many, many years ago when Britain, as Paul shows, was struggling with its idea of Europeanness. And it wasn't something that anyone would have picked up unless you did a historical study. And he helps us understand the genesis and roots of these things that uh, most of the time happen when we hardly know them uh, or can see them. And uh, he talks about the digital disruption. He talks about the financial crisis facing universities. He talks about the challenges of leadership and real scholarly or academic production that is anchored in Africa's and Africans' realities. This, I would say, is the most important part for me as uh, someone who is involved in the uh, regulation of uh, university education in Kenya, uh, where Paul and I uh, uh, work very closely. But uh, it also helps us understand something that is very, very clear in his mind, which is that he is talking both as an insider and also kind of an objective uh, 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 outsider who is looking at a historical analysis while also looking at the practices of it. Let me, let me uh, say something a, a little bit about uh, uh, the, the, the book uh, that we are, we are also talking about today. Zeleza's writing allows us uh, to see a very complex, um, analysis of phenomena that looks at how these seemingly minor interventions can contribute to the catastrophes that we often see. We've seen uh, him talk about the role 
of the state, something that had been gutted by the neoliberal uh, market-oriented disruptions of the 19th and, 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 and 20th century, and shows, especially when he talks about the coronavirus, how the coronavirus ripped open any certainties about the globalization machinery that was set up to dilute and eventually eliminate the role and power of the state. African states were supposed to have to cut back on their interventions in social services because they needed to allow their countries to freely engage in the open market or what they call the free market. This was being done as Paul shows us while European and Asian nations were themselves practicing protectionism, hidden under the guise of quality control. Then Corona happened and the role of the state became central to the responses that were to be uh, in, in, involved there. I wanted to talk about also the personalizing or personalized view that uh, Paul brings to his writing and wanted to read something when he talked about Africa as seen through uh, the, the comments in, in, the, in, the, in the challenges that were brought by Ebola. I think it was uh, page 2008, 208, for those of you who have the book, the hard copy, uh, if you get a chance. It says a lot, and let me just read it quickly. I, ha I was afraid of Ebola because it was robbing me of my African authenticity when I failed to give special insights into the nature of the disease to inquiring colleagues or the media about the culinary delights of eating monkey meat that had apparently sparked Ebola and the strange primeval customs that helped spread it like wildfire. The fact that I was not a medical doctor or from the three affected countries did not matter. I was an African. Or had I become too Americanized to understand my African disease heritage? Maybe. I was not too Americanized enough to speak authoritatively about things I knew little about, not even when it came to that simple place with a single story called Africa. End of quote. Paul is able to bring that kind of sarcasm to speak about something so important because he understands the way in which Africa has been constructed, Africa has been imagined, Africa has been represented. And for him, it is an African uh, challenge for us to do more of these kinds of projects and to put Africa's uh, narratives in the right manner. Because as you see, uh, as you've seen throughout his writing, uh, Paul does not just critique outsiders, quote unquote, but critiques insiders who are also not very good at showing the both complex and connected sides of the African story. Now, let, let me, let me um, say that when reading this book and seeing the way Paul takes topics that he is writing about reminded me of uh, the post-election violence in Kenya in 2007. And I remember when I met with Paul, he had just uh, written a piece about uh, that post-election violence. And I thought, what could he have captured with uh, a short one or two month uh, visit uh, to the continent? But I was astonished at how detailed Paul was able to capture the realities on the ground. And that is how I know Paul pays attention to detail, to information, to sources, and puts together a story that allows the person who is not there to be what we call in anthropology, like they are there in that context. So I want to congratulate Paul for this wonderful book. It's an opportunity for a second book, I think as, uh, as our brother from uh, Caribbean has said, and I want to challenge Paul. When I was re reading this, I was, I was saying, I wish that the last paragraph that Paul gives in each of his accounts was enlarged 
so that we can see Paul, the practitioner more, because in, a, in higher education, for instance, he's been in higher education for a long time. And when you talk about the challenges facing higher education in this age of disruption, there are some things Paul has done either at USIU or at Quinnipiac or when he was in, uh, down in California that have made a difference in the institutions and also in the way we manage uh, uh, higher education in general. How I wish that Paul could take the next book and share the story of what he has done uh, in, in order to respond to some of the challenges that he has given in uh, this book so that we can see not just Paul the historian, who is sometimes is very descriptive, but Paul the practitioner, who can sometimes be also prescriptive. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations, Paul. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. 